Ma'am. So how long have we yeah, been... Huh? What were you saying? No, I was just gonna ask, like, how long have we, like, been going? An hour and a half. Already? No, no, it's 44 minutes. Oh. Alright, yeah, Breeze Harbor. Oh, yeah. Is that this a trouble? Cool. Oh, yeah, there's this trouble with the trolley, eh? That mission isn't even that hard. No, it really isn't. Actually, I, I well, well, we'll get to it. But th this, um... This and another world in, uh... Autumn Plains have a connection to one another. Whereas, like... Yeah, which, yeah. which one chronologically happens the first? I honestly don't know, but I, I I'll just say this one by default because it's earlier in the in the home world. I think it, I think the other one's actually chronologically first. Mm. So I don't know. <laughs> Aspire to uh, level timeline go. Oh right. gosh, I don't care that much. No, I don't. I don't really care that much either. Yeah, so, um, this, this level you work with the uh, Breeze Builders, and in the other level you work with the Land Blubbers, and, uh, we're, what I was saying earlier about, like, this game having a really good sense of the, the world's feeling like actual places, people, uh, like, with characters and stuff, uh, these two levels bring that point home, because, like, it's the only, it's, it's the only, uh, point in the trilogy where you have something like this. Well, it's like a war going on between two set kind, two sets of um, uh, species or whatever you want to call them, um, and it's over the and it's over the course of two se separate levels, um, and and I think that's really cool because you don't really see this in any other point in the series. To my rec hmm? to my to my recollection, anyway. Spiral's basically acting as a double agent between them. Yeah, because uh, yeah, cause, like, he doesn't really have, like, um, I don't, I guess a bias towards one or the other, because, like, he just is like, okay, I guess I'm going to work for these guys this time, like, <laughs> I guess it's just, like, as long as I get a, um, a talisman, then I'm good, I'm good, fam. And I don't want to be a dead horse with the Ripto thing, but it would have been nice if um, if they made it just made it a quick point or like some something it was mentioned somewhere that like the whole war was created because Ripto did something, and it just caused the uproar, and then all this started happening. No, no, I think these guys are just assholes. I mean that works everything. too. That works too. Yeah, Ripto doesn't really cause much of the problems outside of Avalar itself. Yeah, or, or like the... Uh, well, I mean, like, again, like, the only characters that really mention Ripto are the main cast. And uh, even then, the only things he does in is, like, uh, put up banners, pretty much. I think Glimmer, Glimmer's affected by those lizards are... Are those Ripto's minions, or are they just random lizards? I don't know. See, it's never really clear, like, because in in the manual, like, um, it says like the uh, tiki things came to life because of Ripto's magic, uh, but that's never brought up in the game. But like, if they just put stuff like that in the game itself and then some, then a lot of the issues I have with Ripto as a villain would be solved, and also make his actual uh, end goal. Um, like clear because like uh, he do uh, What even really is his plan? Like it, it's just like he wants to take over Avalar. It's like there's like what? Why? Why does he want to do that? Like what? Where did he come from and all this stuff? It's never really explored. And it's kind of a shame. 
break is, there is a raging storm outside my house right now. Oh, yeah, I can hear that. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I this is... I, on a, I like this level a lot more than the Land Blubbers one, because... Um, I, I'll, I'll cover this more later, but like, the Land Blubber stage is honestly one of my... Uh, least favorite stages in Spyro 2, um, just because of... Well, I'll, I'll get more into specifics later on, but... Um, I But like, the reason why I like this one more overall is because... Um, it goes by a lot faster, and um, the pa I think the pacing's pretty good. Whereas like the other, the Land Blubber stage has like way too much stuff in it. it. Has like four orbs, I think, and it just takes way too long to to complete. And um, again, I'll get into specifics when we actually play the level, but yeah. But no, like, what do you think about this whole like land blubber, um, breeze build up war thing? I didn't really understand it until I went through TV tropes. <laughs> it's a thing, I guess. I I enjoy it on the basis of the fact that it just does. I mean, does for what can I say? I enjoy it on the basis that it does provide some more personality to the worlds. Yeah, that's the main reason why I like it. We don't really know why they're fighting, though. No, nah, not really, but... I don't know. It's a cool idea, and, um... I think they do it reasonably well enough. It's kind of... And they, like, they make fun of, like... The, like, it, like, a whole Romeo and Juliet situation in the other level. We. But yeah, like again, the levels are pretty linear, and um, and again, like the level design's fine, like I said, um, but because of the way the stages are usually designed, it you know doesn't always let you be as creative with uh, Sparrow's like m movement or like gliding and stuff like that. Alright, yeah, Zephyr is the other stage we need to play. Spyro's a war criminal. Yeah. Um, yep. Yeah. Also, one quick thing as well. Uh, the talismans are only part of the first two home t uh, home worlds. Um, the uh, stage after that, or the, the the third home world, only has the or only has orbs. So, this is interesting. So, what is your opinion on trouble with the trolley, eh? Nah. Oh gosh, I have the hiccups. Oh, jeez. It's not that bad. No. Yeah, I, I think this is a pretty nice challenge. Uh, like, that's a, it gives you plenty, plenty of time to react to what's coming ahead. Um, and it's a night nice, is. It's not like. Like the gameplay change isn't like completely out of left field, and it is still you're still a platformer. It's still a platformer. You're still like avoiding and jumping on over things. And there's worse missions in this game. Yeah, yeah. I think that I think this is a fine challenge, and there's nothing really super difficult about it. It's just right for this point in the game. I think. 
I think it's that in the controls are probably a little too aren't as responsive as they could be, but I mm. I didn't really and failed this mission too too many times. Yeah. All right, and now we have to go back. Yeah, self so explanatory. Jump over the uh, the boxes and destroy the TNT with the weapon. Uh, press circle. That's what you need to do. But yeah, pretty simple. Uh, but you know, nice challenge. Now we need to clear up some gems now, I think. Did we get the, uh... Yeah, you blew it up. Alright. Alright, yeah, it just... crashed or something. <laughs> Meme line incoming. Yeah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, we're not doing that again. Alright, where did the... Alright. Oh, okay, where are we missing? Over there, apparently? Okay. I forgot Sparks has its own special gem finder. Yeah, it, it does help for situations like this. And it keeps the playthrough moving, because I don't want to, like, just... Be wandering around trying to find a random gen for like 50 years. Would have helped a lot in Spyro 1. Yeah. Hey, where is this? Did I really miss one at the start of the st Oh, what? Oh no, I think those were like gems that uh, appeared after hitting a, a chest thing. I don't think we need to worry about a um, skill point. Oh no. I like how, like, enemies are there, <laughs> even, even if, like, we killed all of them. Alright. I think it's time for a speedway. Oh. Mm, I'm not sure if I want to do Sephir right now, so I'm going to do this stage over here, which is Metro Speedway, okay. Alright. So I remember, the, I remember the skill point requirement for this one being pretty tight. So... Yeah, the bungee jumping guys can be kind of annoying. Yeah, you, you do that speedway, I'm gonna take a... I'm gonna... <laughs> I'm gonna minimize the screen so I can my stomach and take a rest. All right. <laughs> you gonna? You are you still gonna be here? 
Yes. Alright. Yeah, this might take a couple of tries. Take your time. Oh yeah. gosh. I'm pretty sure I can get the uh, fini finish the course at least, but you need to beat the best time to get the score point, and I don't know what that is. Oh wait, I think I got it. I think I heard the sound. Uh, I heard it. Congratulations. All right, now we just have to find Hunter. Hunting the hunter. Uh, where is he? Oh, I think he's in her. Uh. <laughs> it's never explained, but I, I just love I love the fact that you just infinitely have a super glide and a supercharge during these stages, just cause. Oh. I keep forgetting that it's not actually Hunter you, you uh, talk to. I think you're thinking of Spyro 3. Yeah. I mean, Hunter's usually part of the, of the, of the uh, challenge, but... Yeah. Yeah, point in... Point, case in point. <laughs> I oh, see, so this is another fun little challenge, so Hunter shoots the uh, burglars and then you have to catch the the gem bags or whatever as they fall down. So just pay attention, watch where Hunter shoots and then you should be fine. Nothing inherently too difficult about this, but you know, just... Yeah, just... Pay attention and just follow Hunter. I think I remember this being my most hated speed way in Spyro 2. <laughs> it did take me uh, quite a long time to be it the first time, I would admit. And there we go. Nice. That took. That was a lot shorter than the first. The uh, one in the first speedway. I do like they add that they added like an extra challenge uh, in the speedways, like in this game and the third game. Because in the f in Spyro One, it was literally just the speedway itself, and that was it. No sucked. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Last time I complained about Spyro One speedways, I promise. <sighs> they they were are. Uh, Pretty difficult to be fair. Uh, I still don't really want to do suffer. I don't. First, right here. I, I don't know. Uh, what have we got? We gotta, we gotta do it eventually. Oh, we barely even scratched the surface. Let's see. Um, there's another speedway. So you actually just got four more levels. We're like halfway done with this world. What level was that? Uh, I think I've already... Have we done that one? Um, I can't remember. Wait, where is it? Oh, yeah, Breeze Hub. Okay. Yeah. And then we go through up here, and then there's like a... Little hallway or whatever, with a bunch of stages. Climbing is kind of a pointless ability, to be honest, because it's, it's uh, only used with very specific points, and they don't really do much with it. Yeah, let's just do Scorch.
Rip. Their tongue stuck out the whole time. Uh, the, uh, the vo voice, uh, the voice actresses and uh, whatever, then, yeah, probably. I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, for the character model, it looks like her tongue's been stuck sticking out the whole time. Oh, oh, the actual, uh. It might just be her mouth, but I can't tell. Yeah, I think it, yeah. Or lipstick? I don't know. I, th I think that's lipstick. Alright, so the, um, school point in this one is just to, uh, head bash all the trees and have the little coconut things or whatever fall out. And this is our introduction to two semi-recurring characters in the classic series. Yeah, the, uh, Han Handel and Greta, uh, appear in Sparrow 3 as well. They're cute. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know... Yep, it's obvious. Um, uh, was it? Handle and Gretel. Yeah, like uh, I was gonna say, like it's like it's like a parody or whatever. Yeah, there's nothing. Uh, this is kind of a uh, by the numbers level for me. Like uh, it's. It gets the job done fine, uh, but it's very simplistic. So it's, yeah, I like the aesthetic. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what my favorite level in Spiral Two is. I don't even know if I really have one. I mean, I guess the closest would be um, a level in the third one. Uh, I I I almost called it a warp room. <laughs> Uh, the third, uh, home world. It's probably my, uh, probably has my favorite stage. Alright. But in general, like, my, my biggest problem with Spyro 2 is... It, it probably is the fact that... The level design just feels simpl really simplistic compared to the other two games, at least in my opinion. Because, in a lot of ways, this is better than Spyro 1. Like, the worlds uh, feel more, like, lived in, I guess, and the, the characters are entertaining, and the story is more fleshed out, but, yeah. A while since we've seen Hunter in a regular level. Yeah. Alright, so this is another pretty easy mini game. Just follow Hunter uh, and then bash the trees when he gets near them and he drops the monkeys into the uh, little basket. <laughs> Silla monkeys. And we'll be seeing a lot more monkeys when we uh, play as a certain character in the third game, which is uh, Scrappy's favorite gameplay style of all time. I thought you were talking about let's play Donkey Kong 64. Oh no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> I've already decided decided on that. That does remind me, though. Uh, I do need. Um, I don't know if we should do it after the Spyro games. But I do want to LP Jungle Beat. Like, that that's my compromise. I'm not going to do DK64, but instead of going right to Returns, I'm going to do Jungle Beat instead as a blind playthrough. And, th and then, after that, I'll do Returns eventually. Not right after, but like, some, d some d time down the road. Because the main, the main, my main goal right now uh, is to do the Spyro games because Reignited is coming out in September and I want to get these two games done before then. Um, and I uh, need to finish the Kingdom Hearts series with Jason before Kingdom Hearts 3 comes out. Um, 
Because See, I'm... that's a joke, Harry. Kingdom Hearts 3 isn't coming out. <laughs> I have hope. <laughs> I'm like 80% certain that it's going to come out this year. <laughs> and apparently they have a release date. Uh, they're, they're, like an actual proper release date they're going to show some t sometime early next month. Hmm. So if they stick by that, then, you know, we'll see. I know that this is not like a random rumor that we're going off of. The, this is like, an, like actual statements made uh, by Square Enix or whatever. They must not announce another game again until they're ready. Yeah. Yeah, like we're after after this, like what? Well, just in general, like they they need to stop announcing games way before they come out, like. They should announce a game when they're already way, like, really far in development, so we don't have to wait, like, five years. <laughs> I got burned on Zelda too hard. Yeah. Because, like, uh, even the morals, like, we announced Kingdom Hearts 3 way too early. Truth be told, we probably shouldn't have been... Oh my gosh, it's like a treasure trove up here. Yeah, boy. Truth be told, we all shouldn't have been complaining about Kingdom Hearts 3 not going up for so long. Yeah, that probably didn't help things. I think uh, they were just pressured at that point. Like, we should have just... I mean, I know it's... Call me a corporate apologist, but we should have just accepted the spin-offs as they were coming out. Yeah. Uh, because, like, people, people like say, like, oh, we, we've been waiting for Kingdom Hearts 3 for, like, since Kingdom Hearts 2 came out. And, like, I guess in a sense you have, but, I mean, come on, you have, like, all these other games that have been coming out that are important to the series, and they're all... Well, I... And some of them are actually very good. Yeah, I, ha I, ha I, get I have my issues with days, but, like, there's neither here nor there, but, like, you have all the all these other games you can play that, all that are all pretty good in their own right, and um, I think they keep people busy... For a decent enough right, I time. Think, hmm? I think you got all the, I think you got the skill point for the palm trees. Hmm. I haven't heard anything. Didn't you just get a extra life randomly? I don't remember seeing a life. Hmm. I guess we'll find out sooner or later. But um Yeah. I just find it kinda silly when like is when people say like they've been waiting for Kingdom Hearts three and they and like in the same the same those same people would be like I skipped out on the spin off games because they don't matter and it's that's kind of oh, they will matter yeah yeah and the point point I'm making with that is like if you really want more Kingdom Hearts games then you have a lot more Kingdom Hearts games to play you don't have to wait for Kingdom Hearts three spe in specific. And they've re-released pretty much all of them on one system, so you don't even have that excuse of having to buy a bunch of systems anymore. Yeah. This course is weird with that. Yeah. Yeah, nowadays it's like, uh, people have like the best way to get into the series now, because the PS4, PS4 you have the 1.5 and 2.5 in one big collection, you have 2.8, and... Yeah, most of the games playable, and the ones uh, that are probably have the le uh, aren't as well received are just cutscene movies. But yeah. I just realized there's like no natural denizens of this place aside from them. Yeah, they really aren't. <laughs> so are they like are they natives of this place or? I mean, maybe. I'm not sure. It seems like they're like they just went undercover for some reason. Yeah. But like, 
There's uh, like one last point I'll make. Not not even just regards to Ticket to Kingdom Hearts 3, but like just games in general. I don't really mind how long a game takes to make as long as they use enough the use the time they need to make it as polished and well de designed as possible instead of like you know releasing a game when it's unfinished clearly unfinished and needs more work and you can like quote the Miyamoto thing here <laughs> a rush game is no wait a delayed game is eventually good a rush game is forever bad yeah so something like that yeah Because like I don't, I wouldn't want Kingdom Hearts 3 to to get delayed till like 2020. But if that's what needs to be done for the game to be finished, and yeah, I mean I can't argue with that. Because in the at the end of the day, that that's a a better product for everyone. It's a better game for us to play, and you know. Wait, is he literally in the same spot every time? No, no, well, kinda. I mean, he's on those little, like, Mario flagpole things uh, every time, but he's just on a different one. There you go, all the gems now. It's also it's always the same guy, so... This feels like the closest this game has to a mini boss until later in the game. Yeah. I don't mind. Well, I do mind long yeah. gas, but I'll accept them begrudgingly, just provided you just don't announce it so early. Are we talking about like game like announcements and like? Yes, I mean. I need to remind everyone, I was in high school when Kingdom Hearts 3 was announced at E3. <laughs> yeah, it's been a long time. Yeah, they just need to get better at timing the announcements of their games. Because so I, I, you know, if you need like five years to make a game, you need five years to make a game, but don't announce it before you even re really made much progress. Yeah, um, with this and Final Fantasy VII Remake, I'm hoping Square has at least learned a lesson. One can hope, because, um, but... yeah, because like, that, that's, from what I understand, that's always been an issue with them. It has. Like, at least, with Nintendo, they, uh, usually announce... On Zelda. And yeah, unless it's Zelda. Gameplay, they have gameplay to start, at least. Yeah. For the most part, with some exceptions, Nintendo usually announce games um, like around a year or so before they come out. Again, with some exceptions being like Zelda and things like that. Yeah, with Zelda, I just try to. I think I, I think it's just good to put two years uh, attach two years to the initial announcement. Yeah. That's just, that's just how EP do rolls. And I mean. Zelda games, like, never come out on the time they, they're supposed to, um, so, like... Skyward Sword launched on, at, on time, actually. Oh, really? Huh, okay. And handheld ones usually launch on time. Mm. Well, for the most, like, uh, the, the, uh, the, the, the 3D Zeldas, um, have, like, a kind of a messy track record. With, in terms of that. Oh, I talked to him again. I think he says something kind of funny. Have you seen my sister, Greta? She's ugly with pigtails. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta punish him. Yeah, super punish. Uh, get the thing. No effect. <laughs> I'm just... You... Huh? You have to wait till the third one. Yeah. I'm I'm just gonna assume I got the skill point. Now, this is a little bit weird. Well it's very weird, but like what the heck? And we never see this again. Yeah, they just kinda have weird super devil powers, I don't know. 
Yeah. But yeah, my 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 uh my ending point with the whole like Zelda thing is that um like the track record is kind of messy. So like when at this point, whenever they say uh I don't know Switch Zelda game is coming out twenty twenty. I'm j is it, at that point I'm just like okay I can't wait to play this game in 2022. Exactly. Like I I can't I can't trust <laughs> I can't really trust the release dates anymore. If you expect nothing, you will be disappointed by nothing. Yeah, I'm just gonna end this session with Zephyr. I guess get it done. Because uh, I I like to have this level done before next session, so we don't have to worry about it later. I was I'm expecting something more violent than that. Yeah, I'm surprised he's he's he survived. Oh, the breeze builders are hurting you? I wonder how they got all their resources. 